closing keynote speaker, I want to do something which I always want a closing keynote speaker to do, but nobody ever has, and that is uh, I'm going to end 10 minutes early. Okay? So if nothing else, I deserve a round of applause for that. <laughs> so you can all uh, get on your flights or uh, go to the bar. Okay, so who am I and why should you listen to me? Uh, my name is Sriram Krishnan. Uh, I uh, work at Microsoft on the Windows Azure team. Uh, I've been on the team since the time it was a secret skunkworks project at Microsoft, till now where it's a corporate behemoth of sorts. Uh, uh, I work on a bunch of crazy things. I'm the geo guy. Uh, I'm responsible or to blame for, depending on your perspective, a lot of the APIs that we have shipped. Uh, and for the last year and a half, uh, I worked on this uh, O'Reilly book on programming Windows Azure, which came out day before yesterday. So, for those of your authors, it, you can imagine how I feel, so I don't feel bad about plugging it. So, go read it, it will change your life, I promise you. <laughs> okay, so I have a confession to make. Uh, when I originally signed up for this, this was supposed to be a technical session off in one of the breakout rooms. So I had this nice little technical deep dive planned on some specific aspect of Windows Azure. And then Eric threw me into the, the closing keynote. Uh, and I was told I needed to do something keynote-y, whatever that meant. So I went to Twitter and I looked at all the sponsored keynotes and tweets about them from yesterday. Ugh. Didn't turn out really well. First tweet says, no to speakers, do not read us a sales pitch. Uh, second tweet, sponsored keynote, sad smiley. Third, third tweet, <laughs> the downside of doing 1999 tech conferences, more bought product pitch keynotes. Ooh. Yeah, so I just want to tell you off the bat now that this is going to be the worst product shill pitch vendor keynote you've ever seen, okay? <laughs> so just uh, get to the expectations right. But, but seriously though, uh, I think the best advice I got was from Brad Fitzpatrick. Brad, do you hear anywhere? No, and he, he just came up to me and he said, just do something nerdy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to talk about something nerdy. All right, how many of you have heard of Windows Azure? Okay, everybody. How many of you attended the talk on Windows Azure yesterday? Uh, nobody. Okay. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, so uh, in a brief overview, Windows Azure is Microsoft's cloud computing platform. Uh, like every other cloud computing platform out there, uh, we have uh, we run code on our data centers and we store your data in our data centers, uh, and we do so scalably, reliably, uh, uh, and you know uh, just charge you wh uh, what you use. You know that's Windows Azure in a nutshell. Okay, but what I want to do now uh, is spend the next 12, 30 minutes talking about five random things I picked up with Windows Azure, which I just found cool or geeky or uh, interesting. So number five, like I'm like a half as David Letterman did. <laughs> so uh, uh, this I stole from a, a fellow Microsoft employee, uh, Don Box. Uh, Don was sitting in the Bill, Bill Gates review a few years ago, and he asked Bill, what is the one thing that you could go, that you wish our developers would do? And Bill said, I wish we could make them write less code. So if you've seen over the years, Microsoft has tried to move from a procedural model to a declarative model. Not just Microsoft, you know, everybody else. Like a long time ago, if you were installing packages, you were writing all these crazy scripts which went and checked what was installed and what wasn't. These days, nobody does it anymore. You have a fancy little DSL and somebody else takes care of, you know, figuring out what the dependencies are and doing it for you. So instead of doing, you know, uh, what is instead of hooking things up, you just write what you want and somebody else goes and makes it happen. So this is one place where Windows Azure is very different from the rest of the, the cloud platforms that you may be familiar with. In fact, if you remember nothing else from my talk today, I just want you to remember this. That is what we mean when we talk about Windows Azure providing service management and a service model. Let's assume I walked up to any of you, any of you who's running a web app, and I came and said, hey, go out there to whiteboard and diagram out your architecture for me. So you're going to take a marker, you're going to start drawing, well, here are my web front ends which run my web server, uh, here's my memcached uh, box, here are these other boxes doing something else, here's my database uh, machine, right? And you start drawing these boxes, and you start drawing arrows between these boxes, you know, which could be, well, this guy talks to this guy over port foo, uh, here's my thrift RPC service talking on some other port, and you soon have these boxes and arrows diagram. Something like this. Okay, uh, some, uh, a bunch of nodes uh, talking to each other, probably exposed over a load balance of some sort externally. So in Windows Azure, what we say is, instead of dealing with individual nodes, if you can give us this diagram uh, in a XML file we call the service model, 
and describe your service. You describe what each machine does, you describe what ports it listen, listens on, uh, and, you give, and what port it wants to listen externally or to the outside world to. We'll do a few things for you. First, we'll take this diagram and we'll provision your machines, get the right bits out there, and you know, instantiate this diagram for you. Second, we'll maintain this diagram for you. That means that if a node goes down, or let's say a machine catches on fire, which doesn't happen often in Microsoft data centers unless Balmer is around, uh, uh, what happens then is we detect it and we bring up a copy of your code in another VM somewhere else and we rejigger the network connections around to make the diagram whole again. So if nothing else, remember this, that by modeling your service, we can do all these magical things uh, instead of you having to go manage each node separately. So the goal here is to kind of take some of the grunt work of doing ops and you know, getting a page in the middle of the night of having a machine go down and take some of the boring work out and have the, uh, the system do it for you. Uh, here's an actual uh, service model. Uh, wow, need a higher contract here, but it's just a simple XML file uh, which is automatically generated for you and just defines what your roles are, what your endpoints are, and just you know, makes it happen automatically. The second concept I want to talk about in the, in the theme of you know, being declarative is one of affinity groups. So a lot of you use cloud storage providers to store blobs or uh, semi-structured data, right? And a lot of you have code running in uh, cloud storage providers to access those, uh, 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 to be to access those uh, storage data, uh, the stored data. So in Windows Azure, what you can do is you can say, well, this piece of data over here and my application are related. My application uses the data. And then what we go and do in the data center is we do some networking magic and some placement magic to make sure they're pretty close to each other and really optimized for latency. So again, like the idea of okay, just declaratively writing down how your application works and having this do some of the uh, magic underneath the covers for you. So that's number five. Number four, how does all this stuff work, right? I've been just talking at the uh, high level so far. So first off, here's a bigger picture of one of our data centers, so to speak. Uh, we have uh, a bunch of data centers all around the world, North America, Europe, uh, Asia, and so on and so forth. And in each of these, we have thousands of machines. Now, uh, for on each of these machines, uh, there's an agent running, okay? And all these agents are managed by this brain we have, which we call the fabric controller. And this is a Paxos replicated, highly available service running on multiple machines. And this guy is uh, the entity which takes your code and those service models and then explodes it onto the VMs and then manages them all for you. So this is like the brain behind Windows Azure. And on top of all of this is we run all our storage services, our blobs, tables, and queues. We have APIs with those. And the fabric controller itself has APIs which you can access to say, well, deploy a new uh, a service or delete a service or scale it up or scale it down. Now, if you go, uh, if you want to go develop on one of these, there's a free SDK which you can go get right now and get started, which has a simulation environment uh, to use on your box. There's a free offer too, so you can go uh, par uh, party on our cloud without having to pay anything, at least for a while. If you go dig deep into one of these VMs, uh, we have a custom hypervisor that we have written from scratch. This is not the same Windows Server 2008 hypervisor. In our case, we know our machine, so we can optimize the hypervisor for just the machines that we run on. Uh, and we've done some uh, interesting things around uh, using nested page tables, uh, being able to boot from a virtual image directly, uh, and some other uh, crazy optimizations. On top of this hypervisor, we have a thin API layer that you write to, but inside the VM, it's just a Windows Server 2008 box. So when your code runs, all it sees is a Windows Server instance. And frankly, it, you won't be able to tell the difference between running a Windows Server VM anywhere else and on Windows Azure. It's no different. Okay, so that was number four. Number three is I stole this uh, tagline from APIG who are standing over there. So please don't sue me, uh, sue Microsoft. Uh, uh, they have more money. Uh, well, at least uh, not as money as Apple as of yesterday. But. Hey, so the deal is uh, we love APIs, okay? And uh, I was here for the last two days in BlueCon, and with all this talk about APIs, I can't help but plug our own APIs, having also built some of them myself. So pretty much any service we have on Windows app Azure has APIs for it. And each of these APIs is nice, restful, uh, a clean API which you can just play with and curl if you choose to. So blobs, tables, queues, our drive service, they all have APIs. 
Uh, we have a management service API which scales up your service, scales down, changes configuration, does all that magic. Uh, we have a hosted uh, SQL server offering, which is like a scalable RDBMS service in the uh, cloud, which talks over T-SQL or SQL Server Protocol, and basically a ton 